Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the adventures of Anton Rain and Sousa Rain. Apparently, we have a meeting uh, to go over the results of the vote. The vote for the failed constitution, I assume. I don't really see a point in that. I feel like that's water under the bridge. I think our focus right now should be trade deals, anything to grow the economy, to pull us out of this damned recession. As you can see, the economy does appear to be growing. So we're finding success there, even we, though we found defeat and failure with the Constitution, but nonetheless, hopefully something interesting happens in this meeting. Lucian stood upright, holding a large folder of files under his arm. He bowed in acknowledgement, I assume to us and not to the folders? I acknowledge you, folders. He looked exhausted. And the cabinet is gathered in the white room, sir. The Vice President will be opening the session soon. We can go in whenever you're ready. Thank you, Lucian. You look tired. How are you holding up? Oh, it's nothing, sir. I'm uh, ready and able as always. Are you sure? You can be honest with me, Lucian. It's okay if you're worn out dealing with my bullshit. I, sh I shot too high, I guess. I just wanted democracy for our nation. I'm always honest with you, sir. I admit, this last year was rough. Especially all that lobbying work, but it's nothing to break me down, sir. Trust me, I'm fine. He fixed his tie. Anything you want to let me know before we go in? Uh, no, sir. Just keep your cool with the cabinet. I believe concerns will be raised in the meeting. That means I'm going to have to deal with Lilius trying to shit all over me or some of the other idiots. Uh, what concerns? Our failure of the reforms had a huge impact on public opinion and on also on some of the ministers from the looks of it. The party is quite discontent about the whole situation. They believe your presidency has destroyed the USP's prestige. Dude, this party was going down one way or the other if we didn't start representing the people and changing the voter threshold. They want to blame me for it, whatever they can, but it was going to happen either way. You know what? I, I am done playing the nice guy. They don't even have the guts to face me. If the party doesn't fall in line, we must consider a radical change, Lucian. Uh, such radical changes towards the end of our term is not advice, sir. But we could talk about these in the meeting. He gestured at the door with the files he held. You know what, Lucian? We're not a super popular president. We, we need to throw a Hail Mary. You know, we've got to, that or we've got to have, get us pulled out of the recession before any re-election. Like, one of those things has got to happen. Or we got to hope we run against total fucking idiots. That is another possibility. I think we should go inside, sir. Uh, Mr. Vice President must have started this session already. You know what, Lucian, why don't we go get ice cream, man? Let's just blow this popsicle stand. Lucian held the door for me, and we both left the office for the white room. When we entered the room, Peter was speaking to the cabinet members, who were already seated around the table. As soon as they noticed me, they all stood up. You know what, I'm not going to say a damn thing. I could say, hey, everybody. I'm just going to sit there and watch. I'm not saying nothing. I looked around at my cabinet members. They were staring at me and waiting for me to speak. Peter stood right next to my seat in the middle. He turned to me and gave a wave of his hand. And here's our president. He held out my chair for me to sit down and smiled. Uh, please? When I sat down, everybody immediately took their seats. I'm just going to let Peter talk. I'm going to be silent. Let people think whatever they want. That I'm angry, that I'm worried, that I'm stupid. If they think I'm stupid, that's not going to change now. Peter walked to his seat and spoke, still standing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here to discuss our current status and plan the remaining parts of our term. I know that some of you have had your concerns about our style of governance so far. There will be a time to speak up about these in the meeting today. Maybe I shouldn't have let him talk, because I would have said, everybody shut the fuck up. But I must also thank all of you for your hard work so far. We are very lucky to have a team like this. All of you have been invaluable to this administration. Lilius grimaced at his remarks. Having said that, now we have reached a critical point of our term. We are nearing the end. We have worked long and hard, but we couldn't reform the Swordish Constitution. Our organization was flawed. Our party was not united. 
The very parliament we control has denied us the reforms. Lucian and I have begun investigating who let us down at the vote. We need them the most, and we needed them the most. Gloria and the conservative wing of the party didn't back us up. Some party centrists have opposed us due to our decision to veto the campaign finance bill. Casaro Kiebner and the National Front MPs didn't like the proposal and voted against it. <laughs> you might as well list almost everybody. We had Clavin, the Independents, and the Pifjas. He paused and looked around the room. Uh, but the past is the past. We must now look towards our future. We are investigating and uh, analyzing our faults. We will be taking measures accordingly. He glanced at both Lucian and me. Our party still remains divided. In order to look at the future, we may need to make some changes. Peter, with our popularity right now, the changes are going to be us going out the door. I don't know. I don't know if we got a lot of room to talk, but you know what? Keep going, man. If these are our final days, might as well enjoy it. On the other hand, the opposition is exploiting our failure to reform. The latest polls show a steep increase in the opposition's support. Why? The opposition and us stood for the same thing. It should really be the conservative support that's growing because it's the conservatives that killed what we were trying to do. So let's start the meeting with a brief look at some reports. Must we? He fumbled with a stack of papers in front of him. Uh, with the latest developments, we have seen an enormous decrease in our popularity. Oh, the public opinion about our party is at an all-time low. It'd be hilarious if Anton reformed the nation by just sinking the party so good people could get elected in other parties. We failed so hard we succeeded. This time, yeah, we're not giving up. Well, we, we, we're giving up on the Constitution. That was a fail. He took out a piece of paper from the stack and inspected it. A major concern of the people is the state of our economy. We are slowly slipping into a depression. Peter, that's not what the growth bar says. Growth bar says the opposite. It says economy getting better. Unless there's something we're not seeing. This will have dire consequences for our administration. We mustn't lose hope and give it our best. Swordland needs us more than ever. Does this, does this bar not matter? Because the economy is growing according to the bar. Peter turned to me. I'll give the word to the president now. He sat down. Uh, I could clap. I could say, I'm going to, cl nah, I'm going to say thank you, Peter. I'm not going to throw Peter under the bus. I'm not mad at him. Thank you, Peter. Everyone's eyes were focused on me. First of all, I want to talk about our new focus and some of my plans going forward. I have heard about you idiots and your idiot plans all the time. It's time for my plans and me. First of all, somebody got to teach me how to uh, water ski on one, one leg, one foot. I can say we need to change the party we do. I can say public opinion is concerning. <laughs> it is. I can say the economy is very concerning. The economy looks like it's doing better, but... You know what? Fuck it. I, I have faith in our economic changes. Either they're going to be too little and we don't get reelected, or they're going to be good enough and our popularity is going to turn around. Um, so we're going to change the party. It's time to focus on changing our shitty party as a whole. I will add a new vision in our manifesto. The cabinet looked uneasy. Lilia spoke with a concerned look in her eyes. I'm sorry. That's all right. I forgive you. As I said, I will reform our party platform. I don't know if I want to... Or should I declare war on Seoul? Seoul fucked us. Yeah, uh, no, as I said, I will reform our party platform. I see. And the party leadership will agree with that? I don't care if they agree with that. What are they going to do? Kick me out? <laughs> Won't change my... <laughs> how I'm doing. You see, uh, I am the current chairman, Mrs. Graf. You're right about that. However, the party does not belong to you, Mr. President. You'll learn about my thoughts if you bring your suggestions to the leadership. Honey, I'm going to learn about your dumbass thoughts no matter what. That was the extent of my comments. We can move on now. Thank you for your comments. I turn to the others. If there are no other comments, let's move on with the meeting. Next, I want to hear brief reports from each ministry, and if you can, do it in one word, and the rest do in pantomime. 
Peter gestured at Simon, and he immediately stood up. Uh, Mr. President, uh, dear colleagues, Mr. Vice President was pretty on the point with his summary of the current economic status. He also used the words depression. He couldn't have been more correct. Our GDP has shrunk by 15% last year. This downward trend has broken our economy over the last years. If we cannot contain this in time, we will end our term, in the truest sense of the word, in a depression. The, the economy is growing, numbnuts. However, this is not yet reflected well with our debt situation. Our total national debt has increased about 65 billion SR this year. What? We only have negative one debt. If we enter a higher deficit over the next years, we'll face a massive debt crisis, which could crash the economy. The Assembly is working on introducing new tax bills, which will generate more revenue for the government. These efforts will depend on the government deficit situation. On the other hand, unemployment has seen no positive changes. There has been an increase in joblessness. It is now at 26%. We have lost control of the situation. We caused millions of people to lose their jobs. He paused for a moment. Is this literally useless up here? I'm going to stay silent in case he has more he wants to say. Well, I, I don't want to get into too much detail uh, right now, but I, I have to say that the failure to open our first infrastructure project was costly. Fortunately, we expect to see it finished in the next months. Woot woot! Woot woot! Better late than never! The highway might actually get finished and we're in the middle of working on the port project. But apart from all that, I'll finish with an update on our latest project. The manager reported that everything is going well and very fast with the Morna port. I'll keep it brief for the sake of the whole meeting and end my report on that note. Your concerns have been heard, Mr. Hull. Mr. a Hull. <laughs> Gus stood up as Simon sat down. I will also keep it very brief, Mr. President. Why can't y'all do that all the time? Our farmers are still suffering. Our ministry did its best by giving out subsidies to local farmers, but our agricultural production remains the same. Gus, the money we spent on upgrading machinery, that was your idea? If this has failed, that is your fucking fault, because we did your idea. We have only recorded some developments in the Angland region, but our farmers in Gelsort and Bercia are still suffering. Yeah, Bercia's a shithole. It's an absolute shithole right now. <laughs> Anton's like, don't tell me, I know, I'm from there. That will be all. Was that it, Manger? Yes, Mr. President. We can have a separate meeting to take a deep look at the numbers at the ministry, if you'd like. No, I would not like. Wait, Gus, are you quiet and short because you're sad? Because you lost all that money when gas and went tits up? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. Let's move on. I don't know that we need any more meetings about that shit. We already tried your other plan, Gus, and you said it didn't work well. Next up was Pascal. Uh, Mr. President... Our state facilities require immediate attention. We're experiencing long lines in front of hospitals everywhere. We are currently also investigating some reports of a small polio outbreak in a village called Haymere. I believe we can get into more details in our policy meeting soon. Why? I don't... Why are we having a meeting to have a meeting? Now, don't get me wrong. That's very realistic. <laughs> very realistic to politics and if you've ever worked in a corporation. Can we not have meetings for meetings? Can we just have a meeting that solves things? All right, thank you, Mr. Benowal. Iosef stepped up. Hey, the Ministry of Defense has a very important report regarding our situation with Rumberg. All right, this we need to hear. The investigations show that Rumberg was, in fact, weaponizing rebels against our state. That's what Smolak, who runs Waylon, said. We have learned that they've been aiding the Bloodish rebels in Waylon, too. Our military must stand ready for any possible attack coming from Ramberg. We have gathered intelligence regarding the military research and production. That was probably from the whistleblower. That is great that we know that stuff. We've we've got to make uh, an alliance with Lesbia like a number one priority. We need another ally. They're building a massive army. We urgently need to increase our own military production. We cannot let them threaten us like this. Um, maybe we should take advantage of our alliance with Ignolia. We should bring our military forces closer with Ignolia so we can cover each other. Of course, sir. We already started cooperating. But I must highlight that Ignolia cannot stand against Rumberg. And neither can us by ourselves. I'm working on getting another ally even though you don't want more allies. 
We can only trust ourselves. Honey, if we can't beat them by ourselves, what makes you think we can beat them by ourselves? You've already said... Uh, make the necessary arrangements, Mr. Lancia. We'll have to use whatever we have to its limit. Of course, sir. David stood up. Uh, Mr. President, Pearl has agreed to begin deal negotiations. We'll be moving on with that very soon. Who the fuck is Perla? Is that the head of Lesbia? Our relations with Ignolia have uh, greatly improved. Our ministries have scheduled many joint projects together. Yeah, the region is very unstable with the incidents at Romberg, Wayland, and Helgeland. We, we gotta be very cautious. Uh, we can talk in more detail at our foreign policy meeting. Your concerns have been heard, Mr. Wissy. Sierra was next. I just want to throw a mug at her face. The moment she opens her mouth to talk, I just want to chuck a mug across the table and hit her right in the kisser. Our ministry is working day and night to improve our education system and increase its accessibility. We have since greatly improved our rural education, building new schools and bringing new equipment and books. We have accomplished a lot with our new curriculum. Our reforms will be greatly improving our output as a society. That is one feather in our cap. Anton grew up in a rural region. We have helped increase the quality of education in rural areas. Lilia suddenly stood up. Mr. President, there's an important report from our intelligence officers. We've disrupted an illegal arms deal that was taking place inside our borders. There seems to be several anti-government groups organizing large-scale attacks. You did something good? We might need to implement some new measures soon. We'll provide you with a more detailed report at a later date. How was this not... How, how was not this... How was this not like one of the first reports? This and I, uh, penis heads. Unfortunately, after the departure of Governor Braun, the situation in the Special Zone has barely changed. Despite not following the extreme policies of his predecessor, Governor Kral is continuing with his discriminatory policies against the Blues in Bergia. Yeah, I know, he's NFP, what do you expect? I'm afraid if this continues, we'll have a major problem in our hands. The reports of the BFF organizing its forces is very concerning. Luckily, I have some good news about the abolishment of the Bergia Special Zone. Apart from a few small details, the project is ready to be implemented. We can get rid of the governor soon. I'll send the final documents for you to sign soon, Mr. President. Alright, just don't have it cost money and don't have it be shit. Thank you, Lilius. Thank you very much. Also, Mr. Gracer had a report for you regarding an investigation you wanted him to look into. He's supposed to be, uh, Greaser is supposed to be investigating the oligarchs. Maybe he actually found something on Kuranti or Tusk or one of the other oligarchs. There is one more thing to ask of you. I would like to transfer the Gendarme under the Ministry of the Interior uh, to improve internal security efforts. I do not see Iosef, uh, penis head accepting this at all. Well, he just might have to agree if the President of Sorland tells him to. He's right here in this meeting. Why don't we just talk to him? The Ministry of Defense shouldn't be meddling with internal security affairs through the Gendarme. The Gendarme of the Republic of Sordland is an armed law enforcement organization which maintains security, safety, and public order in the rural regions of Sordland and executes the duties ascribed to it by other laws. The Gendarme General Command is subordinate to the Ministry of Defense. Uh, it was established in 1899, has survived until today. After the Republic was proclaimed, the Gendarme stations began to serve people in the most report, uh, remote parts of the country, in addition to carrying out security and public order duties. During Seoul's term as president, most people began to identify the Gendarme with the state itself. Why would I transfer it? Like, what is the benefit, Lilius, other than the fact you want power over it? Like, I am very much not for a militarized police force, but, like, give me a good reason to agree with you. We had several incidents where they were too violent too quickly, and it stems from military officers giving reckless orders at times. I I'm still not so sure how this would help. Come on, I I'm listening, Lilius. I'm giving you a- I'm giving you an opportunity. Sell me on this. 
I can assure a, a better internal security structure with cohesion and successful operations. Will you transfer the Gendarme to the interior of the future in the future? I don't know, man. Number one, if I do this, it's gonna piss off Iosif. I don't know if that's worth it. Um, we're on good working terms right now. Nia t told me to worry about Lilius. I guess the flip side, though, too, is the military isn't trained for general policing. Their job is to fight wars. God damn it, Lilius, you're just going to get me killed in any disagreement, because right now me and Iosif agree. Iosif is going to be so mad if I do this. Right now, we have a very good relation with the military officers in our country. Our country has a history of the military office inter officers interfering with politics. God damn it, Lilius. I think you have a point, though. Uh, if there have been violent incidents, I will support you in the Gendarme authority transfer. Now it's your turn, Lilius. You need to produce results. Excellent! Lilius smiled faintly. Nia stood up. Since the removal of Governor Braun from office, there have been some positive results for our bloodish citizens in Bergia. Tell them they're not happy right now. However, Governor Cruel seems to be looking for new loopholes to continue Braun's racist policies in different ways. Mr. Urson gained a lot of popularity for his fight against Governor Braun and is now leading a peaceful ground movement against Governor Kroll. Maybe we should join that. Maybe we should show our support for that. According to the court ruling, Governor Kroll cannot resume Felix Braun's oppressive policies. But with Mr. Hawker leading the court, finding loopholes may still be a possibility. I am afraid if Mr. Kroll retains his position for long, we may see tensions rise again. Oh, like the tensions that are already there? Um, you know what? I expected some suggestions there, Nia. I need solutions. I can update you more in another meeting! I did this to myself! I did this to myself! Nia took her seat. Um, alright, I believe that's everything. One by one, my ministers packed up and left the white room. I followed suit and headed to my office. Carl Greaser was waiting for me by the door. Hey, Mr. President. Hey, Carl. Can I have a moment of your time? I got something to discuss. Uh, yeah, let's go inside the office, uh, where it's private. We entered my office, and I sat behind my desk. Uh, please have a seat, Carl. Uh, thank you, sir, but I'm fine. Uh, I will not take long. The anti-corruption police has compiled a report regarding the active investigations. We've been watching the oligarchs closely, as you asked, and found a complex web of connections. There are missing links in our investigation, but the oligarchs seem to be involved in huge cases, cases of corruption and lobbying. I knew it! I knew they were! Some of them tried to bribe me. If we could take down the oligarchs... Number one, that would be great for our country, and it might make us super, super popular. But even if it doesn't, it would be great for the country. Even though so many links lead to Walter Tusk, we couldn't find a direct incriminating evidence yet. Currently, we're following a trail that leads to Earth's Estord, which will hopefully finally get us Tusk. That or we could um, come up with, like, RICO charges. Uh, we need a RICO act. Uh, we also have another suspicion. Our findings led us to believe there might be some connection between the increasing illegal arms trafficking in East Mercopa and the oligarchs. The oligarchs have been smuggling. Have they been smuggling in some of those AK 47s? Has it been them and Rumberg? Have they been working with Rumberg? If we decide to proceed with our investigations, we can potentially uncover a lot more. Yeah, continue your efforts and keep looking. I want the oligarchs destroyed. I destroyed one of them. I want to get the rest of them. Yes, sir. I'll give you an update soon. I'll also send you the detailed report of our previous findings. Can I ask him why he didn't let me know Soul was coming to town? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Carl. Get those bastards. Nail them to the wall. He bowed his head and left the office. 
The last two and a half years had gone by so fast. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Our port, our, our, our port, uh, seaport we're working on is halfway done now. Uh, still a bit for the highway. No news. We do have some reports out, though. Let's see. Estord? Gang violence diminished. The police chief of Estord reported that the local police forces have finally eliminated one of the biggest money-making schemes of the Coronelli. Coronelli are one of the organized crime families. When we took over, organized crime was a massive problem in our country. We're kind of routing out and destroying the organized crime families. According to the report, over the last month, 40 mob members have been arrested, along with three high-ranking members of the Coronelli. Hopefully some of this will also help our popularity. We are trying so hard to get rid of the corruption that's inherent in the nation and in the system. And tell Whistleblower agent. That's the guy that came in from Rumberg. Our intelligence has verified the details relayed about a heavy water facility in the north of the kingdom of Rumberg in a ballistic missile test site. Oh no. Are they working on nuclear weapons? We don't have any counter to that. Gelsword? Anti-government protest. Yesterday morning, a group of protesters assembled in front of Gelsword City Hall and have not yet dispersed. The group was responsible for blocking out vehicles including city buses and transport trucks, and have been handing out anti-government pamphlets to passersby. The mayor of Gelsord reported that the situation posed no active danger, and the people are only exercising the right to protest. That's awesome. I mean, it's not great we're getting protested, but, you know, it used to be violent protests. Good, good, good. You know, I'm not going to say pretend our presidential... Stuff is looking great all in all, but a lot of things have improved in the country. A lot of the things we've tried have worked... Um, let's just hope whatever the next meeting is, it doesn't suck. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out.